Uh, Quinn Ewers uh, has uh, some salad on the top of his head that uh, draws a little conversation. People like to comment about his, and uh, maybe at some point this season, uh, there's going to be evaluation of how he can play. It's as good as uh, advertised. All right, Tony, we'll start with you in regards to this news that uh, <laughs> I'm sure you have have said little about this, have not addressed this at all, but um, why now? And yeah. and uh, there are obvious benefits to, to the young man, but uh, in regards to his own career path and uh, immediate benefits, but uh, how did this all hit you? See, I, ever since he committed, I, I've had this trying to figure out when guys are going to be starting. Like, what years will they start? And you can you had a nice line of C.J. Stroud starting for the next two years. Kyle McCord starts for a year, goes to the NFL. Then Quinn Ewer starts for a year and then goes to the NFL. But now you've sped up that clock. And for me, I think this increases Quinn, increases the chances that Quinn Ewers never starts at Ohio State because he's going to be behind everybody and he's the same eligibility as everybody. So now he has to overtake his own classmate in Kyle McCord. And, and Kyle McCord has been here since January. Kyle McCord is very good. Quinn Ewers is very good, but the people who think he's going to come in and you know start this year, I, I don't, I don't think that's possible without other guys getting hurt. I think he will play because he can play four games. So Get him out there in some blowouts. Let him play. But for me, I think this is bad for Ohio State, and it's it's unfortunate because it eliminates a year that could have been somebody. Like it, it, you've got all of these guys on campus, and I'm to the point where I think they're more likely to only get three years out of these four guys than to get five years out of these four, and that's that's unfortunate. And and by Quinn Ewers coming in a year early. He's kind of eliminated eliminated a year of his waiting because he may see this year as, yeah, I'm just going to go there and get accustomed, but he's not going to want to sit two years and had he arrived and sit maybe three years and had he arrived in 2022, he'd be more accustomed, more okay with sitting because there's more established guys. And so I, I just think overall, this is a bad thing for Ohio State. And um, yes, they may still. The, the downside of Quinn Ewers leaving is you still have Kyle McCord and Quinn Ewers or Jack or uh, Jack Miller or whomever. But like I, I just it's I don't like it for the possibilities of Ohio State and Quinn Ewers chances of starting at Ohio State. That's where I am. That's kind of where I why I was like shrugging as you started with me, because I think I have an unpopular opinion, but that's just how I feel about it. Well, it's Kevin, not yeah. popular that the number one quarterback in the country is not never going to start at Ohio State. Go Kevin, ahead, guys. Yeah, I'll jump in. I mean, I you know I kind of go back and forth. I can look at this from both sides. I mean, it, it's a situation of where Quinn Ewers was going to have to beat somebody out at some point anyway. Uh, so whether or not you know, I think we can sit there and say that twenty one might be a little bit of a wash. I mean, you know, he's he's not here today. He's not going to be here tomorrow. It looks like it might be next week or so. So everybody who's saying he has four weeks to get ready, well, no, he's got three weeks to get ready for the start of the season. If you expect him to march out on the field at Huntington Bank Park, whatever, formerly TCF, up in Minneapolis. So he's not going to be there quickly in terms of the start of this season. So let's just say that he comes in and gets a little mop-up time this year, get a little taste, see what's going on. He would have had to beat somebody out in 22 if he's this true freshman phenom. I mean, he would be a true sophomore instead. So, you know, I think it's ultimately going to come down to just how how good he is. But, you know, you also have to sit there and look at how you – how you maneuver this room, how you don't lose the room. If if we go into this season and taking Ewers out of the mix and Kyle McCord wins the job, what does that mean for Jack Miller and C.J. Stroud, two guys who are you know a year older in terms of how long they've been within the program, not necessarily eligibility-wise? Do you lose them because of that situation? And then do you sit there and put yourself in, in a bad position with Quinn Ewers because you're dealing with two guys that are going to be 2021 classifications, you know, who would be running neck and neck? 
How much does Quinn Ewers have to be better than anybody else on the roster in 2022 to take over the position? Does he have to be 1% better, 20% better, 50% better? I mean, you know, so there's a lot of questions there. So I understand every point that Tony's making about this does raise the potential that Quinn never takes a snap at Ohio State in meaningful time as a starting quarterback. But, you know, conversely, I mean, he's supposed to be this generational talent. He's supposed to be this guy that's, you know, the best the best thing since Trevor Lawrence coming out of high school or whatnot. Some people even putting it a little higher than that. So, you know, if, if the cream's going to rise to the top and we're just going to have to kind of see it. But I want to make one hair comment just as we talk about Quinn Ewer's hair. I just don't want to hear all the Ohio, Ohio State, State fans, fans who complained, who complained about complained Trevor Lawrence's hair sit there and say, "Oh, they love the mullet." Both are equally ghastly. I mean, you know, if we're being quite if we're being quite honest, I mean, but neither haircut is is flattering, and um, I see that as bald and beautiful. There you go. Um, I think, as we talked about with uh, AI Gaote or Naoe or however you pronounce it. Um, Yours has his own process that he is going through right now, the way that, and again, I kind of understand this. I think that, first of all, they went to the Texas equivalent of the Ohio High School Athletic Association and asked them point blank, can we monetize through name, image, and likeness? And I guess the state legislature of Texas, which if you haven't heard, they've been in the news a little bit lately, um, they passed a law to allow the college athletes in their state to do it. But I think the local schools in Texas may have lobbied the legislature. And there's some narrow wording perhaps in that bill that precludes high school athletes from doing that, as I understand it, in the state of Texas. So that was the first thing this Texas high school board told the Ewers family no. Uh and they, they've washed their hands of it and said, this wasn't us. This was the legislature and their law that, because they don't want to be seen as the villain, you know, that took that kid out of the lineup at South Lake Carroll High School. Uh, and I mean, it's costing them thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, my God, the, the playoff in Texas goes on for about two months and it goes all the way to the Saturday before December or before Christmas. So, and they try and sell 30,000, 40,000 tickets at Jerry World for it. So you think they'd rather have that kid playing in their championship game down there? Uh, sure, most certainly they would. And they would have been over backwards to allow that to happen uh, if they could. So they could monetize him and every other top prospect that's going to come out of Texas for the next 6,000 years. So that's the first thing. He can't get name, image, and likeness in Texas, and apparently he's on the cusp of some big deals because he's the number one overall prospect. Now, there is a, a limit to how big of a household name Quinn Ewers is. We all know about him. Everybody watching this show knows about him. The recruitniks know about him. But my experience is that is a very small percentage of the college football fan base, and it is also a very small percentage of, of the population at large. So Justin Fields as a three-year quarterback at Ohio State, he could have made, you know, big money in name, image, and likeness. Quinn Ewers can make some money in name, image, and likeness. Let's don't get it twisted. So uh, I guess he's got a local company that wants to buy in and then maybe some other stuff. So whatever. Again, that's his business, his family's business. But I think that's a little bit of the backstory is that he can't get paid playing for Carroll High School, whereas he can come up to Ohio State and, and he had no bit, no idea he was going to spend four years in college football anyway, let alone five years in college football. So he is coming to Ohio State this fall. And whether he plays it down, whether he plays mop-up time in five games, whether four games to preserve his red shirt, or he starts every game, we don't know how it's going to turn out. And I don't think Corey Dennis, Kevin Wilson, Ryan Day can predict how it's going to turn out other than they're going to put the quarterbacks who are eligible and available to them on the field every day. And whoever's the most consistent, the best leader, the best playmaker – that guy's going to play the most snaps in the first game, followed by the guy who's the second best at that and third best and fourth best. He's at a disadvantage. 
He hasn't spent one minute in this offense. I mean, they've had Zoom calls with him, and they've tried to explain concepts, and they've sent him a book, I'm sure, and he studied it and whatever, but he's never been sat down in a room at a chalkboard watching them you know, dry erase board, you know, however you want to put it, and watch them draw it up and then show it to him backwards and forwards. See, you took a bad step here. You didn't, you know, make the proper turn here. You didn't make the proper read here. He is just kind of going up the hill on the beast, the roller coaster at, at uh, Kings Island. He is just starting that ride. Everybody expects him to be at the top of the ride and going down the first hill. And then down the second hill, that's not happening. That It's a process. You just don't stick a novice sight unseen. And I use that word. He's got all the tools in the world. But as a college football quarterback, he is a rank novice. No spring football, no practice, no nothing. You don't stick somebody like that even in, a, in an 11-on-11 practice situation at Ohio State where somebody could you know take his head off or something. You would never do that in a million years. So this is going to be a long, drawn-out process for him. And I think first things first, as I understand it, cleared by the NCAA clearinghouse. Is his transcript in order or his test scores in order, et cetera? Admissions at Ohio State. That's not a turnkey operation. I mean, Ryan Day can drop a lightning bolt and say, I need this kid eligible tomorrow. And they'll move heaven and earth to help him. I mean, Gene Smith will make phone calls over to Christina Johnson, who will make phone calls to Nummy down in admissions, and they'll get it. They'll get it. They'll get it going. Believe me, it'll be quicker than if I sent my kid there, decided to send my kid there tomorrow. Believe me, my kid would take six weeks. Quinn, yours is going to take a week or two. I think within a week or two we'll see him maybe out there in a – in a helmet with a uniform, and he'll be sitting in the meetings and whatever and whatever. But I can't imagine him being on a practice field with this team as it's constituted. He'll be working on the side with the GA or with Mick Marotti's people or whatever. I mean, conditioning. First of all, conditioning. These kids have been conditioning all summer. You, you cannot put somebody off the street. direct. It doesn't work like this. This is football at the highest level other than the NFL. You, you just – you don't do this. And so I think that, that his family has chalked this year up to let's get paid and let's learn college football and learn the offense. And if we get to play, then we get to play. And we're in the running for 2022. That's how I kind of look at it. If he really plays any meaningful snaps in 2021, I can't imagine it would happen before game five or six. I just have no – plus you've got two other guys you'd have to climb over – Let's say whoever starts the first game gets injured, and now they have a real need for a difference maker at quarterback. He's got to climb over the other two guys. I mean, I I don't know. I I'm skeptical. I if the family has any other thought than this was just a experimental year for him, I I don't know. That's my that's my fifty cents on the whole thing right there. And even if they view this as an experimental year or, or whatever. By next year, they're going to view it as year two. Like it, it, it's this may be year zero, and it, it doesn't really count. But next year, it'll be this is our second year in the system. Let we get things got to move. And I have come around to the thought that whoever wins the job this year, I, I just assumed they would be the guy next year. I don't think you can do that. I think you have to. It's going to have to be an open job again next year because you're going to have really talented guys. And so you have to allow them a chance to win the job or else you're wasting or potentially not finding out if you've actually got the tip most talented guy. So you've got to give every guy, every quarterback on the roster a chance to win the job because that is the talent you, that you've recruited. And if you don't, then you're wasting it. And instead of going out and getting five-star guys every year, get a five-star guy every other year and then bring a guy from an Ohio, from Ohio in uh, to supplement. And then you can, Situate things how you want, but if you're going to bring in five star guys every year, you got to give them a chance each year, or else uh, you know you're just you'll become a, a place that they're not going to go to because they know that they're not going to get that shot. That shot. So if they get a shot each year, then you can to bring in like, hey, I saw I saw a retro freshman come in and beat out an incumbent. So I, I think it, and no, I know it's possible there, and you just have to open up the job each year now to keep guys engaged and to potentially keep them that season 
the addendum that uh, Steve attached to a number of those statements was not at Ohio State. And, and that's certainly key in all this, because if he walks on campus somewhere else, he's in just as much harm's way because of all the things that Steve stated in particular that he would have to catch up to. But he would be that much better than the next guy in terms of talent. So there would be that pressure to rush him. But they're looking around the room and they've got <laughs> shoot four of these guys that are four and five stars. And the unfortunate thing, I believe, as Tony mentioned, and we all have known for quite some time, and this just adds to it, is unfortunately they're not staggered in classes. Um, they're all freshmen, true freshmen or redshirt freshmen. And that's what it is.